my name is Sophia Huynh, and this poem is called Her Paper Voice. My grandma's voice is becoming like paper. It is smooth, flimsy, and a little rough around the edges. With every story she tells, it spills out of her mouth like a printer, never ending, telling me her experiences that she's waiting to tell me all day. She speaks in the firmest tone that would get the point across, yet could still be bended without making a crease. When she realizes that she had said something wrong, instead of erasing, she folds her paper voice into a paper river. Shows me that the road to forgiveness is long, yet you can still float there if you hang on long enough. My grandma's voice is becoming like paper. In her eyes, you can tell that her paper voice is wavering. When I was little, I often stayed with my grandmother. I imagined her Mandarin Chinese characters jumping out of her throat being imprinted on her voice writing a story. She told me how to stand your ground. Look up into the person's eyes when they're talking to you and always be present in any situation so people will have no choice but to give you recognition. She emphasized multiplication, addition, subtraction, and division, but you could tell within her explanations that her voice had another story. When you see the subtraction symbol, you must know that it's just adding another negative number. Like how us Chinese are always just there, but we're always being subtracted away from the equation. You need to know addition, because that's the time where you learn to add yourself back into the problem. Multiply courage into something so great, it's too big to count, and divide those haters' opinions into something so small, the amount is undefined on the calculator. Maybe, just maybe, we're so good at math because we're constantly reminded to calculate the distance it takes from America to Asia. Have you ever thought the reason why we're so good at math is because it is the only subject that our elders understand in their own native tongue? My grandma told me that the first thing to do in a problem was to foil. First, hold your head high and look towards the sky. Tell them that your belittled, slanted-shaped eyes will always try to find the truth. Outside, explain to them why they're pronouncing your name wrong, but in fact, you know you're just pronouncing to yourself. Because repeating your name out loud repeatedly is the last reassurance that you actually belong in this world. Last, being bilingual never meant for you to be alone, but to be together. Sometimes I wonder if we should measure the distance between our xenophobia and our common sense. You see, my grandmother's voice is becoming like paper. Every time she answers an unknown phone call, her inclined mannered Chinese characters are being shredded to pieces. She musters up the two words of no English and turns toward me with her eyes, pleading to help me understand. It's been over 14 years that she's been in America, yet the only word she knows in English is no, sorry, hi, and no English. She has never said my name in English once. She can only communicate in a language that she can call her own. But communication is a broken bridge. You can see the way, but sometimes you just can't reach the other side. Before she came to America, she was so poor she made her family's own clothing. She got paid $10 a week for fixing watches. She lived in one room with a family of eight. When she came to America, she saw a better life, a better future. But in America, how can she get a job if she doesn't speak English? In America, instead of adapting to new languages, we force people to learn our own. She now questions and asks me if she should die in her home country or stay and die here in America because the only thing holding her back from leaving is us. Every time the question of leaving came out of her throat, her voice became creased, crumpled, and a little ripped on the edges. I need to read and listen to as many paper voices so that I can form a shadowing tree. And that tree will be too thick to be ever cut down, but now that I think about it, my voice is also becoming like paper. It is sometimes smooth, flimsy, and a little rough around the edges. I sometimes speak in the firmest tone that would get the point across, yet could still be bended without making a crease. I will speak for my grandmother who cannot convey her feelings into English words. I will help her all my life. I will follow the path of my grandmother's footsteps and pick up the torn leftover pieces of her paper voice that she had once left behind.